This is episode 111 of Teacher Approved. You're listening to Teacher Approved, the podcast helping educators elevate what matters and simplify the rest. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. We're the creators behind Second Story Window, where we give research-based and teacher-approved strategies that make teaching less stressful and more effective. You can check out the show notes and resources from each episode at secondstorywindow.net. We're so glad you're tuning in today. Let's get to the show. Hey there, thanks for joining us today. In today's episode, we're sharing eight questions you can ask yourself to help you reset your classroom and start the new year strong this January. We start our episodes with a morning message just like we used to do at morning meeting in our classrooms. This week's morning message is, what is something you still do the old-fashioned way? Emily, kick us off. Well, I still write a paper to-do list. These days, we do so much of our work digitally that it makes the most sense to keep my to-dos digitally as well. And I actually do keep a digital to-do list. But (laughs) when it comes down to what I need to accomplish today, my brain is just so much happier when I write it out on a piece of paper. It's the first thing I do when I'm feeling overwhelmed or like I can't focus. I grab a piece of paper and just brain dump all the things I need to get done that day. And seriously, is there anything more satisfying (laughs) than that feeling of physically crossing off something on your list? Yeah, that's why I will add things I've already done to my list. (laughs) And checking a box or hitting the like strike through button on the computer is just not as satisfying as your pen dragging (laughs) across that to-do list item. But the downside to this is that my desk is cluttered with old half-finished to-do lists everywhere. (laughs) What do you still do the old-fashioned way, Heidi? Well, I am the same with the to-do list, probably just because like you, I like checking things off. My calendar's on my phone, but I have a daily to-do list that's on a notepad. But something else I do the old-fashioned way is I cannot follow a recipe off of a screen, not off my phone, not off an iPad. It just drives me crazy. I want an actual paper recipe. So now I've got like this huge stack of loose recipes I printed off and then have just never bothered to figure out what to do with. So That's kind of the downside of being old-fashioned on that one. Yeah, I guess the other thing we do old-fashioned is make paper clutter. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, someone's got to keep those. I think I've got digital clutter, too. I've got all the clutter. (laughs) Well, someone has to keep those paper sales people in business, right? (laughs) Gender Mifflin. (laughs) We asked our community what they do the old-fashioned way. Suzanne said math. And Lisa said, read a real book and read aloud to the class. The kids love it, even in fifth grade. And I'm like, that should not even be considered (laughs) old-fashioned. Tracy said grade books. She still uses a paper and pencil. And I'm the same on that one, Tracy. I I hated doing my grades on the computer. (laughs) I sound like a dinosaur. (laughs) And Nancy said daily read alouds after lunch. We'd love to have you join the conversation over in our teacher approved Facebook group. So when I saw that this was episode 111, I kind of thought, hey, wait a minute. Isn't that supposed to mean something? So I looked it up. And the answer I thought made a fun little kind of fortune cookie for how we might be feeling at the start of January. Okay. Lots of people are into numerology, but I wouldn't say that's normally our thing, Heidi. No, not really. Not horoscope girlies either. But it can be a fun way to maybe help us connect with the stories in our lives. So if you hear something that's resonating with you, maybe look a little deeper. Maybe it's resonating with you for a purpose. Okay. So what are we getting with 111? Well, according to a highly researched USA Today article, (laughs) 111 signifies the start of things, whether that's a new journey or a new path. Well, that fits for January. Yes. And 111 is supposed to be your green light. You are on the right track and the road is clear. Ooh, all good things to hear at the start of a new year. (laughs) And I like this quote from the article. The universe... Oh, I need some crystals or something. Okay, just imagine we have crystals. The universe is giving you the ability to choose how your future goes by providing options, along with giving you the self-confidence to make the decisions that feel right to you, not to mention the resilience and passion to accept whatever positive or negative outcomes result from those decisions. Ultimately, you'll know the right decision by trusting your gut. If you are doubting yourself, have faith that this number coming into your life, i.e. this podcast episode, means you can stop hesitating. (laughs) Wow. That's a lot of pressure to put on a podcast episode. (laughs) That is not the spirit of 111. (laughs) You've got to embrace this opportunity. 
Okay. Let me try again. <laughs> Let's embrace this opportunity of a new start by figuring out where we're starting from. <laughs> yes. And in the words of a great philosopher, Ferris Bueller. Oh, I've heard of him. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. He was such an inspired thinker. Definitely ahead of his time. So let's take a minute to look around. We have got eight reflection questions to help you get off to a strong start this year. You could just think about your responses, but if you really want extra credit, and we know we've got some high achievers out there, record your answers somewhere so you can reflect on your progress later. Do it on paper. Yes. It's very <laughs> thrilling. <laughs> let's start with our very favorite question. What is going well? And this is probably our favorite question because it's the question that Emily and I need the most. Yeah. We love to jump into fix-it mode. Before an event is even done, we've already got a running list of what we need to do to make it better next time. <laughs> yeah. We uh, we had a fondue night a couple weeks ago, and Emily and I were comparing notes on what to improve for next year before I had even left her house. Yep. Guilty. <laughs> And look, that can be helpful. But if we don't pause to celebrate what went well, hey, the, the fondue didn't seem like it was going to turn out, but it did. And we did not even celebrate it. <laughs> and if you do that, then you run the risk of not ensuring those things happen in the future. Plus, only focusing on how to improve gets exhausting. Take that from our experience. Mm -hmm. We have all worked really hard. So let's give ourselves the gold stars we deserve. Dear teacher friends. What is going well for you? Consider your classroom, but also your life in general. Are you in a good place with meal planning, I hope, or getting to bed on time? Give us some pointers if you, <laughs> if you have that one in place. Maybe you made a new friend or you joined a book club. If you're in a place where it feels like nothing is going right, this question is even more important for you. So listen, please find something positive to hold on to. Even if it's as small as the car starting this morning, identifying the good gives us the strength to cope with the less than good. And, you know, speaking of less than good, our second reflection question is, what are your biggest headaches? These are probably easy to identify, <laughs> unlike the winds. Once you have pinpointed your headaches, take a minute to really dive into what makes those particular things a headache to you. Maybe if you say teaching exactly what part of teaching is a headache. If it's because you have a difficult class, that's going to lead you to different solutions than if your headache comes from unrealistic curriculum expectations. When you've clearly named the problem, you can start looking for solutions. Maybe you need to revamp your management system. Maybe you need to split up the workload with your team. One thing that can probably help every teacher at this point of the year is to revisit your procedures. Now, unless this is your first episode here with us, and if it is, welcome, <laughs> you are probably not surprised to hear us bringing up procedures. We seem to find a way to do that in every episode. It's because procedures make the world go round. It's true, in your classroom. And revisiting your procedures is an impactful way to hit the reset button when you come back to school in January. If you can only manage one thing, this is the one to do. Because effective classroom procedures help reduce behavior problems and will save you so much wasted time, it's worth taking some intentional time now to review the procedures that aren't working as well as they could be. And we have some procedure review Google Slides that are great for doing this mid-year with your students. These are brand new, and it is important to make revisiting your procedures part of your regular routine. It's really hard to add something like that into the flow of your day a few times a year, though. This is exactly the sort of thing that I would always tell myself I was going to do. I was going to make it happen this year and then totally forget to do it. Not because it's hard to do, but because it's hard to add in things that aren't part of your regular routine. That's why we wanted to automate this as much as possible. There are four different slide decks for reviewing procedures. Each deck has the same slides. It just mixes up the colors, to keep things interesting. You could set aside one slide deck for the end of term one, one for the end of term two, or after winter break, or any other time that you feel a review is useful. And then all you have to do is add the names of your most important procedures to the individual slides. Maybe you want to revisit how students come in in the morning, or start their morning work, or walk quietly in the hall. You just type those procedures into the slides and project them for the students. 
For each procedure, you ask your students to rate from one to five how well they're meeting your expectations and then make a plan for improving or continuing to be awesome. If there are any other problem areas you are encountering in your classroom right now, take some time to identify them and pinpoint some solutions you could try. The nice thing about these slides is you can do so much of the prep ahead of time. A nice little gift to your future self. Add your procedure names to the slide decks now and add a note on your calendar for what day you want to review them with your students. Easy peasy. You can find these rules and procedure review slides in our shop or in our TPT store, and we will link to them in our show notes. Okay, on to our third reflection question. Where have you made progress on your back to school goals? It is so easy to feel like you never make any progress on your goals. I know I always think that I haven't even made a dent when in reality, that is usually not true. Take time to think back on the goals you set at the beginning of the school year. Chances are good that you've come a long way on those goals since school started. Maybe this year you wanted to stay on top of your grading or make positive contact with parents. And you've probably had some days when you have been really great at that. And also some days where you crashed and burned. That is life, unfortunately. But just because you haven't done things perfectly doesn't mean you haven't been successful. We're about progress, not perfection. At the very least, reflect on how difficult some things were for your students at the start of the year. And celebrate how much better they are now at their two-digit edition or cursive writing or hopefully following directions. Yeah, pat yourself on the back because you are the one who helped them make that amazing progress. It's easy in the day-to-day of teaching to feel like nothing ever improves. So take the time to appreciate the growth you and your students have made so far this year. Hey there, teacher friend. Do you have a question or concern that could use a teacher-approved solution? We'd love to help you out by answering your question here on the podcast. You can submit your questions to hello at secondstorywindow.net and put podcast question in your subject line. Can't wait to hear what's on your mind. Our fourth reflection question is, are your goals still serving you? Now that we just reminded ourselves of our goals from the beginning of the school year, consider if those goals are still serving you. If the goals are still serving you, what can you do to continue working toward them? Where are you still falling short on your aims? What specific actions can you take to make progress toward your end goal? For example, if you have a goal to leave as soon as contract time ends on Fridays, but you are not consistently meeting that goal, can you identify what is keeping you late on Fridays? Maybe it's running your copies for Monday because the copy room is always busy during your prep time on Fridays. If that's the case, maybe you could work a little ahead so you can get your copies done earlier in the week. The answer isn't always cut and dry, but chances are you can come up with at least a few ideas you can try to help you meet your goals. If you consider your goals and decide that they are not serving you, what new goals do you have instead? Sometimes a goal you're excited about at the start of the year turns out to be one you don't feel is important anymore. It's okay to abandon a goal that isn't meeting your purpose anymore. If you want to abandon any goals that you no longer feel passionate about, think of some new goals to replace them. You can't hit a target you can't see, so it's important to have something you're working towards as a teacher. Our fifth reflection question is a big one. How well are you taking care of yourself? There's a reason that everyone seems to be talking about teacher burnout more and more these days. It's because, if you've noticed, this career has a way of taking over your whole life if you let it. It will take every ounce of effort you have available. It's so important to constantly be considering how well you are taking care of yourself as a teacher. Some specific questions you can use to reflect on this are, are you getting enough sleep? You're probably not, honey. You need to get some better sleep. Mm -hmm. Are you eating during the school day? Do you have enough water and sustaining snacks available to you? Do you have healthy boundaries between your personal life and your work life? Do you have adequate time for yourself? Taking good care of yourself is something you will probably always be trying to do better at, but remember that you can't be the best teacher you can be if you're not thriving as a human being. And more important than doing your job well, you should take care of yourself because you deserve to feel good. You are more than that job, and you don't have to earn rest or care. You are entitled to it because you matter no matter what. Remind yourself of that fact every time the critical voice in your head tries to tell you a different story. 
You are the only one who can protect your well-being. So take care of yourself the way you would one of your students. All right, on to our sixth reflection question. This is a two-parter. What do you want more of and what do you want less of? Maybe another way to think about this is to ask what are your roses and what are your thorns? Roses are the things that light you up. Maybe that's planning a huge novel study for your students or inventing a new math game. Maybe it's rock climbing at the gym or trying out a new cookbook. These are things we want more of in our lives. Now, what do you want less of? These are the thorns that get in the way of enjoying life. Maybe it's having to cook dinner every night or organizing parent-teacher conferences. If you can totally cut out a thorn from your life, do it. But that's probably not feasible for most thorns, unfortunately. So what can you do to minimize them instead? Could you spend a weekend making 15 freezer meals that you can dump in the crock pot? Could you get your grading done ahead of time so parent-teacher conferences aren't so stressful? And if parent conferences are a thorn for you, the way they were for me, we have put all our tips and tricks into a mini course to help take away some of the sting from that particular thorn. There's a link to that in the show notes if you're interested with that. All right, Emily, what's our seventh question? Our seventh reflection question is, what does your classroom need? Chances are good that when you came back from break in January, you could maybe feel that your classroom needed to be refreshed. What specifically does your space need right now? Maybe you need to clear clutter. That's always the first place I start because clearing clutter makes a big impact and it's so rewarding. Plus, it is totally free. Yes. If you haven't taken down the holiday decor yet, you'll want to get to that right away too. And how are your supplies looking? Maybe you need a restock of pencils and glue sticks. Or maybe you just need to freshen things up with something new. You could add some new decor or find a new book or two for your classroom library. We think new books are always the right answer. They have never been wrong for me. Or you could rearrange your room for a big refresh. You can do a totally new seating arrangement, or maybe you want to get really wild and move your rug and shelves too. Living on the edge. (laughs) Don't feel like you have to do something big like that, but it might be just what you need if your space is feeling flat. We do have a digital seating arrangement tool that lets you play around with different seating options before you commit to moving the desks. We'll link to that in the show notes. And for our eighth and final reflection question, we have, what are you looking forward to? I find it so beneficial to always have something I'm looking forward to. You may already have some things you're looking forward to, like your spring break plans. But if nothing is immediately coming to mind, it's time to create something to look forward to. You can make a bucket list of fun activities you want to do with your students before the end of the year. Or you can start something new like adding Fun Friday to your schedule where the last 15 minutes of every Friday is game time or something new like that. You can also look forward by adding in some surprise and delight. This is a favorite strategy of ours. Surprise and delight is giving your students something special to do completely out of the blue just because. Your students don't have to earn it with good behavior. It's just something you're giving to them because you care about them. Some ideas could be a spur of the moment dance party or a spin of a prize wheel or maybe letting students work under their desks for a change. And while it's a surprise for the students, it doesn't have to be a surprise for you. You can absolutely put this on your calendar so you don't forget to do it and you have something fun to look forward to. These are the sort of things that we tell ourselves we'll remember, but with everything else we're trying to keep track of, it's no wonder that these little extras fly right out of our heads. So write it down, whether that's on paper or digitally. Another thing you can look forward to could be more professional development. Maybe there's a workshop you want to take or a new teaching book you and your team are going to read together. Or maybe you want to invest in a new friendship with a coworker. Having friends at school makes it so much easier to go to school every day. But really, at the very least, give those spring break plans some attention. We got to have something fun to look forward to, folks. Mm -hmm. To recap, here are the eight reflection questions you can ask yourself as you start your 111 January journey slash classroom reset. (laughs) What is going well? What are your biggest headaches? Where have you made progress on your back-to-school goals? Are your goals still serving you? How well are you taking care of yourself? What do you want more of and what do you want less of? What does your classroom need? 
and what are you looking forward to? We'd love to hear what you're looking forward to for the rest of this school year. Come join the conversation in our Teacher Approved Facebook group. Now let's talk about this week's Teacher Approved Tip. Each week we leave you with a small, actionable tip that you can apply in your classroom today. This week's Teacher Approved Tip is make a plan for how you will start doing test prep. I know, you don't want to think about this yet, but I promise it'll be here before you know it. So what can we do to get it started, Heidi? Research has found that spiral review is an incredibly impactful way to ensure learners can recall information when it's needed, like, you know, when you're taking a test. As you may already know, we love to include spiral review in our morning routines, but you can really do it at any time of your day or even with your homework. We have spiral review morning work and spiral review homework designed to help you easily build in that practice every day. And we will put some handy links to those in our show notes. If you haven't found a way to build review into your day yet, make a plan for how you can start doing it in January with either morning work or homework or some other way. For example, maybe one of your math centers each week reviews a topic you learned in the fall. Or maybe you want to do a big review game each Friday. Maybe your kids prepare videos to teach their classmates about tricky topics. Because we are starting this in January, we have time to make review engaging and creative. There are so many fun ways that you can start working this into your schedule. Anything that gets kids to pull information from their memories without the benefit of notes or books helps them retain that information in the long term. That is called retrieval practice, and it's so important that we devoted our third podcast episode to explaining all about it. So you can go back and check that out if you want all the details. You may also want to work on building on-task stamina between now and those end of your tests, working on increasing on-task time, and celebrating persistence and frustration tolerance. End of your tests are just a never-ending source of joy, aren't they? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, joy's the word I think of. (laughs) To wrap up the show, we are sharing what we're giving extra credit to this week. Emily, what gets your extra credit? I'm giving extra credit to a cordless rechargeable screwdriver. It's so handy to have one of these ready to go when you're assembling things or need to do a bunch of small household tasks. I know I had one ages ago, but who knows what happened to it. (laughs) I finally snagged a new one. It comes in a case with all these different tips, including like unusual ones that you sometimes need for like your ring doorbell or whatever. Oh, that's handy. Such a treat to have handy whenever I need it. And it's smaller and easier to grab for a quick job than one of those big drill drivers. (laughs) That's what I have. I think they're probably all created probably pretty much the same, but I will link to the one I got in the show notes. What are you giving extra credit to, Heidi? So my extra credit is for a glass pot. I will put a link to the one I got in the show notes, but there's nothing particularly special about that one. I just got it because it looked pretty. And you could probably cook in a glass pot, but I use it specifically for stovetop simmers. Oh, so bougie. Being extra. (laughs) If you don't know what a simmer is, it's where you put like oranges and cranberries and spices in a pot. And you heat it on low for a few hours to make your house smell cozy and warm, if warm is a smell. (laughs) But I've used regular cooking pots for these simmer pots in the past. But the glass pot makes it look so beautiful as well as smelling nice. It's just really such a comforting little touch to add to a dreary winter day. And it may be extra, but... My kids have informed me that we both are extremely extra, especially at the holidays. So we're just leaning into it. What a baseless accusation you know, they have hurled at us. How dare they? <laughs> That's it for today's episode. Don't forget to use these eight reflection questions to help get your new year off to a strong start. And remember our teacher approved tip to start planning your test prep now so that you are ahead of the game. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Teacher Approved. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow or subscribe in your podcast app so that you never miss an episode. You can connect with us and other teachers in the Teacher Approved Facebook group. We'll see you here next week. Bye for now. Bye.